So, so many people are going to be like, you know, I think Mike finally snapped. He's doing all these LinkedIn videos now. I wish he never done it. You know, I think he's having, finally, he's having a midlife crisis. Let me tell you something. This isn't my first, you know, I'm 39 years old, man. I started having midlife crises when I was like 21 years old, man. One time uh, I was like, I don't know, many bumps ahead. This is going back 10, 15 years. I think it's like 2008, something like that. 2008, that was a stock market crash. Uh, you know, I just lose my ass in my townhome, my condo, found out my girlfriend was she on me. Uh, I got screwed by my business partner, uh, you know, and, and one business, I still had another business that wasn't making any money at the time. Uh, yeah, you know, it was great. You know, uh, life sucked at the time. And I was contemplating uh, just you know, getting in my car and going somewhere, right? You know, the only thing I really had going for me was I had like $30,000 worth of furniture. I had a nice uh, brand new or you know, seven-year-old 2000, you know, Nissan Maxima to me was brand new, right? Uh, so I had a nice car, had a bunch of furniture, you know, and uh, one of my buddies is like, hey, you know, can you move in with me in the basement of this house for a little bit? So that way, uh, you know, I can pay my rent, you know, help you find a place to live, you know, while you, you know, you go through this foreclosure and everything on your home, you know, get your shit together. I'm like, yeah, you know, that's cool. My only other option is to go to Texas, you know, don't really feel like doing that, even though my twin brother is down there and he's running his carpet cleaning company with his uh, business partner, right? And, uh, you know, so I, I go down to this house. I'm like, yeah, you know, there's a little bit of water damage on the basement. You know, I haven't experienced some water damage before. I'm like, yeah, I see it right away. So I asked my buddy, I asked the landlord, like, you know, this place ever flooded. I'm like, oh, I've been here for a while. You know, it's never really flooded. You know, a little bit, you know, in the corner here and there, not a big deal. So they both pretty much convinced me that, you know, it's safe to move in. You know, I'm only going to be there for a few weeks, right? So I got, like, all this cool stuff that, you know, it's still making payments on. Uh, well, not anymore, but at the time, you know, it was a year's worth of payments still. Uh, really nice, cool stuff. You know, a stereo system, keyboard, all this stuff, right? Very first night, you know, I hear a little bit of rain before I start going to sleep, you know, and I'm like, ah, you know, that's cool. You know, good thing I'm, you know, we went to the doctor and they, you know, told me, here, take this for your sleep and, you know, you'll be able to finally sleep, right? Well, you know, I don't know if you know this, but, you know, I'm pretty much like an elite sleeper. I'm up all the time. You know, I take a bottle of NyQuil, uh, you know, I'm back up in 45 minutes, right? So, you know, here it is, 2 o'clock in the morning. They're like, oh, you know, watch out. When the side effects is you're going to have dry mouth. You know, I already get dry mouth for several reasons anyway, right? You know, so I'm like, okay, this sucks. You know, so 2.30, 3 o'clock in the morning, I will wake up. I can still hear the rain going. I'm like, man, these pills got the worst side effects. My mouth is so dry, and I feel like I'm just floating it's so weird man these pills man i just i just don't like pills man they give you the weirdest side effects right so i'm like i gotta just go upstairs to get something to drink right so i roll off the bed and splash you know <laughs> i'm like swimming in my fucking basement right and all the water is above you know i'm like 280 pounds right you know if somebody told me that if i was floating or that i'd be floating on my mattress like i wouldn't think it's possible but like yeah it was deeper than my actual bed. You know, the box spring was like underwater. So like I rose with the water. I had no idea. I've been sleeping in the same thing, right? So all this furniture, all my electronics, everything that I had was like uh, pretty much destroyed the next day. So I was a mess, right? And uh, not only that, but uh, my my new roommate had moved my car and left my window open. So my car was flooded too. So, you know, next day I'm pretty upset. I, I called my brother Pat. He's always taking care of me. He's always... Even to this day, he always gives me so much uh, love and attention to support for all the dumb things that happen in my life, right? He's like, dude, I have a whole truck full of stuff. He's like, you can have some of the stuff I don't need. You know, it's all, you know, already packed up. Uh, you just got to go load it up into this truck. You know, in fact, I'm going to have guys load it there for you because you have, you know, business here, business there, right? So the truck's going to be all packed. You just got to go pick it up, take the truck, my Jeep. Bring it back down to Texas. You know, I'll hook you up with an apartment, give you a place to stay. You can bring your business here, your internet marker. You can do it anywhere. Come on down, man. I'll help you train in MMA. You will do like 40 hours a week training. No big deal, right? So it's like, you know, 5, 30, 6 o'clock on like on a Friday morning by the time I, or on a Friday afternoon by the time I had called him and made up my mind I'm going to Texas, right? So by 8.30, you know, I had driven the 45 minutes where his truck place was, giving them enough time to uh, load the truck, right? I get there, and the mechanic's like, oh, you know, I got to fix the light. There's a loose wire, blah, 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 right? So I'm like, oh, okay, crap, you know? So I didn't even get off the road until like 9.30, 10 o'clock, right? And it's a long trip 
from, you know, where I was at in Chicago, Illinois. I was actually like Batavia, you know, is where I left from. Uh, so Batavia, Illinois to Dallas, Texas, right? It's, it's a long damn trip, even the way I drive, right? And, uh, you know, it's January. You know, I'm wearing shorts and a T-shirt because I've done this trip many times with moving trucks. You know, they're always hot. I'm a fat guy, you know. So I'm wearing shorts and a T-shirt, middle of January. It's a nice day. It's spring, you know. Uh, it's not spring, but it's, it doesn't feel like winter. It feels like spring when, you know, I get in the truck, right? So, you know... I, I noticed it starts getting a little bit cold while I'm waiting for this guy, this bozo, to fix the lights, you know, and he comes over and he's like, hey, yeah, you know, you know, you're ready to go. So I'm like, all right, Cletus, thanks, you know, have a great day, you know, on my way, you know. So I'm driving, you know, uh, through Iowa and, uh, you know, about 1230, one o'clock in the morning, it really starts to snow, like a lot. By like 2, 230 in the morning, I can't see like three inches in front of my truck, right? So I'm like, like just driving, white knuckling, you know, when I'm nervous, you know, things are bad because like, I don't very, I'm too dumb to get scared. I don't get scared too easily. I'm, you know, I'm just driving, driving along. Right. You know, and all of a sudden the lights are off. I'm like, oh, shit, shit, shit. What do I do? What do I do? Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. What do I do? What do I do? Oh my God. It's 70 miles an hour. I'm going 70 miles an hour. I got this big moving truck. I got a Jeep. On the back of my tra uh on the back of some trailer, right? That Cletus had put on there for me, right? It looked kind of rickety, made a lot of noise. I wasn't thinking, right? Error on my part. So I'm driving down the road, no headlights, no dashboard lights. Try to turn on the interior lights, no lights at all. I am actually going down the one like decline in like all of Iowa that I even know about, right? It wasn't like a mountain or anything, but it was enough at 70 miles an hour in a blizzard with no lights to make you kind of pucker up. You know what I'm saying? So here I am. Oh, no. I think, what do I do? Right. And I remember this advice that my dad gave me. that probably saved my life like 64 times. This night. You know, I'm sorry. No spoilers, but obviously I didn't die. Right. You know. So anyway, my dad gave me some advice when I was a little tiny kid. And I always try to remember when he actually talked to me and gave me good advice to remember it. Right. Because I knew it was important. You know, like you guys should do when you watch my video. Uh, so anyway, you know, uh, he always told me like, you know, people crash in the snow because they don't know how to take their foot off the gas. You know, they overreact, you know, they put their foot on the gas or they slam on the brakes. All you really gotta do is just take your foot off the gas and be calm. You know, just go with it. Don't like, uh, you know, just be calm. So here it is, 2.30 in the morning, you know, middle of a blizzard. Uh, the radio actually kicked off too, uh, but before it did, they were like, worst blizzard ever coming your way, right? And so I'm like, okay, I'm going to start slowing down. I'm going to be calm. You know, the road was straight, you know, hopefully it's straight. It's Iowa. I'm good. Made this trip like 70 times, you know, so I start slowing down. You know, I was probably only only 50 because it was snowing, right? But it seemed like 70. It was a 70 mile an hour zone, but I knew I was going faster or slower, right? So I'm in this big white truck in the middle of Iowa right? There is no lights anywhere. Because I'm in the middle of fucking Iowa, <laughs> right? In the middle of a blizzard. And you can't see shit in front of you anyway, you know? Like, even with the headlights on, you can't see in front of you. All the lights just, you know, kind of flicker off in the snow. It's like a big white haze in front of you, right? And then, <laughs> and I see the lights going like this behind me, right? Just as I'm slowing down enough to stop. See, I'm on a road, there's no shoulder, and I'm in a truck that's in diesel, right? So if I stop this truck in this blizzard, it will not start again, and I will freeze to death, right? I can't pull off to the side of the road. The truck will tip over. There is no shoulder, right? And I can't say where I'm at because I got this semi. It's lights coming at me. All of a sudden, I see this thing come by, and I don't know how to God it missed me, but... This thing got so close to me, it actually nicked the mirror on my truck because it took the mirror off. <laughs> I'm like, holy shit. So now I'm like, what the fuck do I do? I mean, what do you do, right? Like, what do you do, right? You can't get out of the truck, you'll freeze to death, right? You can't pull the truck off the side of the road, you'll freeze to death, right? You can't stay where you're at, you'll get hit by a fucking semi, and then you'll freeze to death, right? So I started driving. You know, uh, trying to go like 30, trying to go 40, trying to work up the balls to go faster, even though I can't see because I'd rather just 
go into the snow and then get hit by whatever's coming. It's 70 or 80 miles behind me. You've seen those truckers in the snow. They don't stop for nobody. So I'm like, oh, shit, you know. I'm like, I'm going to die tonight. Yeah, little barber's boy is gone. He's so gone. I'm like, make it worth it, man. Just enjoy the ride, right? No radio. Can't get the damn radio to work. The heat's not working. The truck's like starting to die because it's just so damn cold and it's a diesel. And my dumb ass is wearing shorts and a fucking t-shirt. Damn it. You know? And then here, another fucking truck coming up behind me, right? And you know, I'm like, oh no, I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die. Oh god. I'm like literally trying to ride the shoulder of the road, right? I ride the shoulder, and I'm trying to ride the shoulder just enough where my car is out of the way, you know, but I'm not getting hit by the truck, and I'm not going to die, so I mean, like, you know, it's crazy, you know, fantastic little stuff, right, so I'm like, okay, I'm going to try to get through this, right, I'm going to follow this truck, I'm going to ride this truck's ass, because the only thing I can see is brake lights. And if I stay close enough to this guy, he's not going to hit me. Well, you know, he doesn't know what the hell's going on. He just knows some asshole with no lights is following him now. So now he's slamming on his brakes. So I'm like, ah! You know, and then he starts going again. His truck's faster in my mind. It's a turd with a Jeep on it. And the Jeep's like freezing. So it's like, damn thing's like a big anchor. So I feel like I'm going like this, right? What do you do? Do you stop? Do you freeze to death? Do you wait for the next truck? Or do you ride this dude's ass? I rode this dude's ass. And he's trying to go. And he was riding like a big red rooster truck, right? You know, it looked like a big fucking rooster. Cool marketing, you know. And it was also really awesome because like it was like the only damn thing I could see was this guy's fucking angry rage and his red rooster truck. So I'm behind him. I follow that guy until like 4.30 in the morning. I can't tell you how many times he slammed on his brakes, how many times he probably wanted to kill me, right? I have no choice, man. I got people still passing that's coming by, right? And then some guy in a, like a red Taurus or a red Buick gets between us, you know, and gets behind us. I'm like, oh, my God, I'm going to kill this guy. Uh, I'm like, don't you see I have no lights? Why would you get in front of the with no lights? Oh, my God, damn it. Uh, all over the road, right? And, and then I see this guy. I don't know what he was thinking. Why are you going 80 miles an hour? I'm trying to go with this idiot in the red rooster truck because I don't want to die. And then you're getting in between us. I'm like, oh, my God, what are you thinking, right? And then all of a sudden he goes, Whoa. He goes right off the side of the road, right through the guardrail. I mean, there was actually a guardrail at this point, the first guardrail I've ever seen on it. And there was trees. There was trees. And I see his brake lights go woo, down to the trees. Like, disappeared. His lights disappeared way down into the trees. I mean, I, I probably saw the last seconds of the guy's life. You know, what would you do? I can't stop. I freeze to death. I'm still in the same predicament. Not only that, now I'm even more scared shitless because now I realize there's trees. Like if I go off the side of this, whatever I'm at, I'm dead. Like, it just gets worse. And now, because this guy did this, I look up, I can't see the red rooster truck. All I see in front of me is white. So what do you do? What do you do? Do you keep driving? Do you stop? I mean, like, I already met my mind that you know, I'm going to make my maker either way. So, screw it. I'm going to go as fast as I can. Because if I'm going to die, it's not because I let the truck die and froze to death. I'm going to crash and go out in epic freaking fashion. Woo! You know, so I keep driving. You know? And finally, you know, it's about 5, 30, 6 o'clock in the morning. I start seeing the sun come up. It's still snowy as shit. All over the road. All night long. I mean, my heart must have been going like 228 beats a minute the whole damn night, right? And I'm looking around, and I see people crash everywhere. It crashes, cars, crashes everywhere. Then I see it, the Red Rooster truck. It's between my, my side going this way and the road going this way. He's on his side. And I'm wondering if that man that I terrorized or that woman I terrorized is still alive, you know, because I felt so bad for just riding his ass for two hours. And not only was he still alive, which was great, I knew that he recognized me and he wished me well because he gave me the he gave me this big salute, like, hey, buddy, there you are, right? And I was just like, oh, okay, at least he's alive, right? And then I see it, gas station sign. There's a gas station, truck stop coming up. So I just, you know, I didn't think about all the people I saw dying or almost killed myself. 
maybe had something to do with sorry I mean, statue of limitations is up and i don't feel responsible anyways so you know here i am truck stop i'm like oh my god i can finally just pull over i'm gonna go pass out at mcdonald's or whatever right you know so <laughs> you know we're still on this stupid incline and i you know i see this ramp i'm like okay cool all i gotta do is get this stupid piece of turd down this ramp you know, with it's like, and I'm talking about the snow is deep. It's like five, seven feet deep everywhere. I mean, it's like, you know, record breaking, you know, snowstorm, right? And, you know, I started going down the ramp. And then I, you know, like thinking, <laughs> so ironic too, because I look over my left. I'm like, there's no rear view mirror. I'm like, ah, man, if they start bitching about that rear view mirror. I'm going to fucking kill them because um, I can't find my phone. I can't find my wallet. I got the damn truck. Put them in my, you know, cup holder. <laughs> fucking broke <the> mirror <laughs> right a long night <laughs> i'm not happy so then i look at the right you know because i can't look out the left <laughs> i'm like oh shit what else can go wrong now i got this asshole in the jeep trying to pass me on the right <laughs> he is trying to pass me on the right i can't believe this jeep is trying to pass me on the right no, the, I, don't know, the fucking, I just want to just ah, off the side of the road right <laughs> i'm thinking about tracy's murder one more person today because what do you do <laughs> all right I look over and there's nobody in the damn Jeep. Take another look. It's my fucking Jeep. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> We're going down this ramp, you know? And uh, at the bottom of this ramp is this big Texco or whatever, you know, truck stop. I don't know if it's like a big truck stop. And there's a gas truck pumping gas into the gas station right at the bottom of this hill. So my Jeep or my truck, one of them, is going to hit this guy's gas trink and boom <laughs> blew up everybody all the people trying to get the pretzels all the people looking for directions and just the guy taking a shit too they're all gonna die and it's all because of me and this damn truck <laughs> and that stupid jeep right what do you do <laughs> right what do you do so i'm like ah, i'm gonna continue in this breakneck fashion ah, hit the gas i start cruising down the road right i gotta get in front of this jeep i gotta get in front of this fucking jeep uh, I gotta get in front of this Jeep, you know, because I didn't want to knock it off the side and crash my brother's Jeep, right? So, you know, I get the truck and I get the trailer in front of this Jeep. And I honestly, at this point, I really don't even know if I still even got a trailer. You know what I mean? Like, this is going through my head. I can't see the damn trailer behind my truck. I don't know if there's no damn trailer, you know? So, I'm just going to pull in front of this Jeep and I'm going to slam on the brakes, right? So, you know, I get lined up. I'm like, if there is a trailer behind this truck, this is where it's going to be, right? Ah! Slam on the brakes. Boom! 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 I hear like three or four loud bangs. Bam! And, you know, I'm hitting the brakes. And it's going all the way down the ramp, right past the stop sign. And, I mean, I swear to God, we stopped about like six inches short of this guy who was pissing himself. <laughs> You know, pumping the gas, and, the, and his buddy gets out of the truck. He goes, "Good God, what the fuck are you doing?" <laughs> I put the fucking thing in park. I put the emergency brake down because I was afraid to take my foot off the the gas and uh, off the brake. And you know, I was I turned the truck off. Like I finally, I get this truck off, right? I, I get back, you know, and the damn Jeep, you know, uh, had gone over the front of the trailer and was hanging off on the axle of the trailer. So I'm like, hey, you two guys want to help me? You know, yeah, I know I almost killed you, but uh, you two want to help me put this Jeep back on the trailer so I can, uh, you know, Cletus fuck, fucking, you know, it's all Cletus's fault, <laughs> right? And, uh, you know, no, they didn't help me. So here I am in my shorts. Uh, you know, I'm like, I'm going to get my clothes out and my, you know, back of this truck, right? Uh, the the Jeep smashed the back of the gate, smashed the lock, and it's frozen, too. <laughs> so, like, uh, you know, I couldn't even get in the back of the truck, right? So, like, I'm out here in shorts, T-shirt, no gloves, in the middle of a blizzard. <laughs> and I got to say, Trooper, who didn't want to hear it, he came up to me, and he's like, you know, if you don't move this truck in, like, two minutes, I'm going to give you all kinds of tickets and take you to jail for having an unsafe motor vehicle. You know? All right. Bet. <laughs> So I started lifting this damn Jeep, and I'm trying to get it up on this trailer. And I was out there forever, it seemed like. I mean, to me, it seemed like two days. I, I couldn't honestly give you a time frame. And right when I get the Jeep up, I actually got the front of this Jeep up. I was so happy. I mean, I have a good leg press, but I couldn't believe I got this Jeep up three inches to get up on this trailer. 
the damn thing I was standing on snaps. Both my feet hit the ground, bash my shins off the back, the front of the trailer, right? Somehow, I fell forward, and the freaking Jeep landed on the trailer, right? So here I am bleeding from both my shins profusely, right? I can't get in, in my truck, so I'm like, okay, I'm going to go inside, I'm going to buy some bandages, I'm going to buy some clothes, I'm going to buy whatever's in this damn truck stop that will help me get my fucking unhappy ass to Texas, right? Can't find my wallet. I had to roll down my window. This is what I'm thinking. This is what I think. To this day, I don't know what happened. I had to roll down my window because the heat was off and I had to be able to see. So I'm like this because the wipers weren't working, you know. So as I'm driving down the street to avoid dying, I'm wiping snow off the windshield, right? Well... A few times throughout the night when I'm swerving to not die, apparently my phone, uh, which I found and stuck on my dashboard from my cup holder, had, you know, made it up there. Well, my wallet apparently flew out the window. So I lost all my money, uh, except for like $112 that I had got from one Pat's employees, right? And, uh, you know, because of doing this for hours a night, so I went, you know, freeze to death. I had like a very mild case of frostbite. And uh, I had that from both my, all my fingers, including my thumbs. Uh, so I had, when I, the first thing I did when I got to Texas, I, I go to the hospital, get my shins looked at, get my fingers looked at. Um, I took the 112 bucks, right? I bought every pair of jumper cables, bungee cords, and whatever I could uh, at the, the truck stop to, to rope down the Jeep. <laughs> it was like 13, 13, you know, jumper cables, bungee cords. Uh, and I, I bought belts and straps, you know, everything I could. Uh, the trailer broke, the straps broke, the lights broke. I thought I was going to die the whole night through. I feel bad as shit about all the people that I saw crashed, right? But at the same time, why? Why did I go through all that, right? How did I go through all that, right? That is one of many stories that I don't have answers for. I really don't know the lessons, you know, but I'll tell you this, the one lesson I do get from it is enjoy the ride. It might get crazy at any moment. You never know how long it's going to stay crazy, right? But if you keep your wits about you, you keep the right mental attitude, and you got a little bit of crazy in you, you can survive anything. Have a great day, guys. Thanks.